You're listening to More Than Steps, the podcast where we geek out on how belly dance works one coffee run at a time. I'm your hostess, Heather Wayman. This episode is brought to you by Nadira Jamal, the founder of Belly Dance Geek. Hi there. It's been a while since you've heard my voice, and that's because I'm getting ready to go on an extended sabbatical. I love dancing and I always will, but running a business comes with a lot of activities that are very different from dancing for for yourself. And to be honest, I'm getting tired. I love Belly Dance Geek and I'm so proud of everything that it's allowed me to do and all the wonderful dancers that it's allowed me to meet. But I was given some important advice by my mentor and that's that you need to keep the joy in your dancing. So before I get burned out, uh, I've decided to take a break. I am not quitting dancing, but I am going to be taking at least a year or two to step back and just focus on dancing for myself. And maybe also make some room to explore some of the other interests that I've had to sideline in the last 19 years while I've been focusing on dancing. But even though I'm taking a step back, Belly Dance Geek is not going anywhere. I've gone to a lot of trouble to make sure that you're in good hands. You've probably noticed Heather Wayman stepping up into the director role over the last year, taking charge of a lot of the day-to-day operations. But what you might not know is that we've actually been working together since 2011. Heather is one of my longest term and best clients. She's taken almost everything that we've done. And her questions to me have actually sparked a lot of ideas that have led to some of our most popular programs like personal style snafus. Now, Heather and I are different people with different dance styles, but in the last year, we've worked together really closely, offering two online courses together, and I've been really impressed with the kindness and insight that she's offered as a coach. So I'm absolutely thrilled to have her be taking over in this role, and I have complete confidence in her ability to offer my work and her own under the Belly Dance Geek umbrella. And I'm not going anywhere either. I still do have a lot of ideas, so there is a good chance that you may hear from me from time to time in the podcast. And Heather and I have left the door open to create new products under the Belly Dance Geek umbrella once I've had a break. But in order to get my creative juices flowing again, I really do need a true break. So I am going to be taking a substantial step back, and I may even take a break from Facebook for a while. So in the meantime, I just wanted to send you away with a few last words of advice. The first and most important thing is that the feeling really is the most important part of this dance. Connect with your joy, enjoy the music, connect with the audience. That really is what this is about. Second, keep learning. The more you learn about this dance, the cultures that it comes from, and the music, not only do you become a better dancer, but you get a richer experience and all these worlds open up to you. Just make sure that you do it out of love and curiosity and not fear. Sometimes what we don't know becomes a stick that we beat ourselves with, and that is not healthy and it's not helpful. Third, remember that there's no right way to dance. We all want to be respectful participants in this dance, especially since it doesn't belong to our culture. And that is really important. But do keep in mind that there are no easy answers, and anyone who's offering you one has something to gain by having you adopt their way. So we do need to watch out for disrespectful or irresponsible ways of dancing, but do remember that there are lots of ways to do this with integrity and still do it correctly and with heart and good artistry. Fourth, don't compare yourself to other dancers. Given that we are primarily a hobby industry, even though we have professional opportunities, I think we're especially susceptible to status-seeking behaviors. And that kills your artistry and it kills your joy. Just keep in mind that you have something to offer that is totally different from the other people around you and that is a good thing. That's part of what makes this dance so interesting and so powerful. It looks different on every dancer and it's supposed to. Comparing yourself to other dancers, even ones who share your stylistic preferences, is like comparing apples to oranges, when really what we're trying to do is make fruit salad. And finally, remember that it's okay to make the dance a part of your life on your own terms. Some dancers will make this their life's work, and that's wonderful. Go for it. 
And for some of you, this is something that just brings joy to your life for 90 minutes a week. All of these things are worthwhile ways of interacting with the dance and being a part of the community. So it's okay to decide what works for you at any given time. And remember to reevaluate that over time. It's okay to take a break when you need one. It's okay to forge ahead when you're excited to. This dance is about your joy as much as anything else. This can be really hard to accept for motivated dancers and especially for perfectionists like me. But remember, when we talk about keeping your eyes on the prize, the prize that we're talking about is your personal satisfaction and joy in this dance. That's the prize you need to keep your eyes on. So those are the five things I wanted to leave you with as I go off on my sabbatical. And I hope that you'll hold them close to your heart as you continue to learn more and engage with this dance, whether it's with Heather at Belly Dance Geek or with any other resources and education you find. And in the meantime, I wish you very happy dancing. Thanks for listening. For more Geektacular resources, visit bellydancegeek.com.